The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lambs, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lambs. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry. The bridegroom is here. Go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lambs, and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lambs are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall, and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids, bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, Open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, the early church fathers, early church fathers means theologians, the earlier ones, some saints as well, <coughs> among them, they were interpreting this five virgins or five bridesmaids and the five intelligent ones or wise ones and five foolish ones. In the Bible today, it says the sensible and the foolish ones. They say the sensible ones or the wise ones are likened to our senses, our five senses, our eyes, our ears, hearing, our touch, our taste, our smell, the five senses. And they say, if you use your senses in a holy way, holy use of your senses, you are sensible, like the sensible ones. My dear sisters and brothers, I ask you now, how do you use your eyes? What do you use it for? What do you use your ears for? And how do you indulge in things? What do I see with my eyes? Lots of people today are very much captivated, handphone and pawn and things like that. What do you see every day? And what do you hear? Gossips, complaints. And what do you speak with this tongue? What do you say and what do you taste? And what do you smell? Do you smell the presence of God around you? And likewise, what do you touch? Who do you touch? Do you touch with a blessing? Or you do touch with a slap, a punch? Or warning someone with this finger? Or with all the signs that you use on the road perhaps? If you are using all your senses against what God intends you to use, then you are foolish. Then you are foolish. St. John of the Cross, one of the great Spiritualist, spiritual giants of the church says, the five senses likened to the window of our souls. The five senses, when you silence, when they are silenced, the five senses, they are the pathway, they are greatest communication with God. How do you use your senses, dear sisters and brothers? If you use it wrongly, don't you ever imagine you are close to God? Don't you ever imagine even you can come to hundreds of masses, you can never 
experience God. Because this is all of God's creation. And then, so what do you look at? What do you touch? What do you listen to? What do you indulge in? The first way through which God enters your heart is through your senses. Through your senses. Imagine. So you need not have to go anywhere else. With this body, you can already have a countenance, have an encounter with God. Do you? Do you experience that? So, dear sisters and brothers, keep guard of your senses. Keep guard of your senses. Because this could be the five foolish ones. We pray you are the sensible one. We are the sensible ones. Now, readiness in today's gospel speaks about wedding feast. In the Jewish custom, normally wedding is held on a Sunday, Saturday evening, sunset mass like that. So after that, the scenario is in that context where the bridegroom comes later on and the bridesmaids are prepared to welcome him to meet the bride. And so in that context, this readiness is spoken of. Readiness is spoken of. Now, God's, the oil inside that vessel, inside that lamb, is supposedly the works that you do. Your readiness means you are involved in some activity that glorifies God. And that will, in turn, bring you that spirit of readiness. Can I have that? Matthew chapter 5, on please. So when you are ready, what will happen? Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Where is the light? Who is the light? You are the light. We are the light. And if this light is not lit properly, you will diminish. And this light meaning the oil filled the lamb, that is filled in the lamb, that oil is what you are capable of. That oil is what you are capable of. If you have enough oil, you can not only shine, but you also shine for others. Now, this extra oil. Now, preparing for this, the preparedness Jesus speaks about in today's gospel. Stay awake because you do not know the hour or the day that God will come. The Father will come. Now, First reading speaks about rise early in the morning to seek wisdom. Rise early in the morning to seek wisdom. You know, some young people, we sleep today, public holiday. Fortunately, today is Sunday, you are here. Otherwise, many of us, you know, we will sleep probably till 10 o'clock. Young people, especially till 12 o'clock. And so, the longer you sleep, the less you are able to discover and encounter this wisdom. This wisdom is there, but we fail to see this wisdom. I am not talking about the book wisdom. That is intellectual. This is wisdom. Wisdom is different from intelligence. There are many educated people, but no wisdom. So, he is speaking about the wisdom of the world, not of the world, but of God. And so... The extra oil, you see, the, the sensible brides took extra oil with them. But they refused to share with the foolish ones because they want to be always prepared. The foolish ones did not bring any oil at all. The extra oil meaning you are prepared to go an extra mile in your charity, in your service. Now, you say, I am patient, but be extra patient. I am good, be extra good. I am calm, be extra calm. I am a giver, be extra a giver. 
I am service minded. Be extra service minded. The extra, you know, laugh. I laugh. Have extra laughter in you. I smile. Smile extra. You know, sometimes, you know, we tell people when we go, I go and give sessions here and there, and sometimes I tell people some jokes, and some people laugh like this, you know. <laughs> they close their mouth. You are given 32 teeth. Why God gave you 32? Can't even see two in front. <laughs> Be extra. The extra energy you have. You have so much of energy, but we reserve our energy just for myself. Not even for my family sometimes. You have that extra to go the extra mile. Oh, I serve. How well do you serve? Extra. Everything. You have got joy. Extra joy. Share it. Extra strength and energy. Give. Extra intelligence and knowledge. Give. Why are we keeping it to ourselves? The extra. That is what the, the sensible ones did. But the foolish ones, even the basic, they did not have. Some of us here, so beautiful, you know. Some people among you, you are so dedicated. You are so service-minded from one ministry to another, another. You go on. You never give up. You never tire out. You are giving yourself. Congratulations to those of you who are here in that capacity. While others... You know, many of us are takers. Somebody said, no, Father, they're not takers, grabbers. You know, people who don't come and get involved, they are the ones who will complain, why no extra mass? Why not this one? Why not that one? But the ones who serve, not much complains. The ones who don't get involved are the ones who, sometimes some ones who complain, also get involved. You know why? There are people who do not do anything, they don't say anything. Some people who do not do anything, but they say a lot of things. Some people, they do something, a few things, they say a lot. Some, they say very little. Some others, they do a little, or maybe a little more, they say a lot of things. Some people say a lot, do a lot, and say a lot of things. There are others, who do a lot, but never say a thing. They are the sensible ones. So where are you, dear sisters and brothers? You know, many of us think we come to church and, you know, I will go to heaven. Sure? Are you sure? Are you sure you go to heaven? If you read the scriptures, you will know, you will know where you are your standpoint, where you are. So dear sisters and brothers, let us say, a little extra, give a little extra. Smile a little extra. After this mass, you don't go out there, oh, I never saw you in church? Don't ask that question. <laughs> hey, so nice to see you. Welcome. Wow. That's what you must say. So nice. Leave that question to the priest to ask. Because people get offended, you know. Oh, you asked me. I ask a lot of married couples, young couples, you know, before marriage, they come and see me. Never saw them in church. Oh, I go, Father. Where you go? Oh, I go to church in KL. So easy, you know. I'm not here with a CCTV to check on you, but, you know, this is what happens. So, dear sisters and brothers, don't be assured of heaven until and unless you recognize where you are. So, dear sisters and brothers, failure is failure to prepare is preparing to fail. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail. So dear sisters and brothers, today's gospel speaks about stay awake because you do not know either the day or the hour the Lord is coming. How prepared are you? Are you prepared? And we are going to celebrate Christmas in a few weeks time. Be ready. When? When? When are you going to be ready? Not tomorrow. Not even today. Now. N-O-W. Now. Procrastination. Ah, tomorrow lah. Tomorrow. I do it tomorrow. I do it tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. Now. Right now. Young children, young students here. In two weeks time, you got your exam coming. 
ah wait la i wait la wait la wait la 10 days passed four days more oh, four days more finish lo ambil labis you do a lot of remote remote preparation all the straight days remote preparation no so this is what we have to do remote preparation this is far greater than your exam remote preparation to meet him don't wait until you die la don't wait until you die right now be happy be happy enjoy this moment right now why are you waiting for then use your senses well sensibly no worries But otherwise you have to be very worried because you're not prepared so let us pray for this grace dear sisters and brothers let us ask him to embrace us as we prepare for his coming in our hearts amen